Paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren have been associated with some of the most famous and prominent hauntings and supernatural happenings known to the mainstream. Ed, who passed away in 2006, was a self trained and self proclaimed demonologist with an extensive knowledge on the subject, and Lorraine, who still runs their famous occult museum in Connecticut, is a clairvoyant. Together, they've accumulated many a terrifying story from their cases, some of which we've grown familiar with on the big screen. So, today we're taking a closer look at the real life events that they accounted for with our list of the top five scary cases investigated by Ed and Lorraine Warren. In at number 5, Annabelle. The Annabelle doll is the most prominent piece found in the Warren's occult museum. Trapped inside a glass case with a sign that reads, Warning, positively do not open. This Raggedy Ann doll was initially purchased in a thrift store in 1970 by a mother looking for a birthday present for her daughter Donna. Donna, who was in college at the time and shared an apartment with her roommate Angie, loved the doll at first and took it home with her. Over the course of the next few days, Donna and Angie started to notice something odd about the doll. It seemed to move around the house on its own, never where they had left it. And it would change in position. One time they even found it standing on its feet. Then strange messages written on scraps of paper started to appear all over their apartment, looking as if they were written by a child. A bit freaked out, Donna and Angie called a medium, who told them that the doll was possessed by a little girl named Annabelle, who had died in their apartment building years ago. Annabelle told the medium that she liked the two girls and wanted to stay with them. The young woman allowed it, but much to their dismay, they would soon find out that Annabelle wasn't who she said she was. One of their male friends named Lou stayed the night at their apartment and woke up in the middle of the night to find Annabelle. Annabelle next to him, appearing to move. The doll then tried to strangle him, and the next morning he woke up to find himself covered in cuts and burns. This is when Donna reached out to a priest, who then brought in the Warrens. The Warrens discovered that the doll wasn't actually possessed at all. Instead, a demon was manipulating it, trying to get close to the girls in an attempt to possess one of them. Ugh. No thanks. In at number four, the Smurl haunting. In between 1974 and 1989, a couple by the name of Jack and Janet Smurl, who lived in West Pittston, Pennsylvania, claimed that a demon inhabited their home. Jack and Janet began witnessing strange happenings, the likes of loud noises and bad odors. The torment continued to get worse. Their dog was thrown into a wall. Their daughter was pushed down their stairs, and Jack claims to have been physically and sexually assaulted by the demon on multiple occasions. The Warrens didn't get involved in the case until 1986, and the reports were pretty disturbing. Ed claimed to see a dark mass form inside of the home, and that the temperature dropped severely. The demon even left them a message written on a mirror that read, get out. By 1987, the haunting had calmed down to an extent, with Janet telling reporters that they still heard knocking and saw shadows occasionally. After the Smurls left the house, the new house owner told reporters in 1988 that she never encountered anything supernatural while living there. The Smurl haunting had generated a lot of press attention over the years, and there were a lot of doubts about the legitimacy of the Smurls claims. And at number 3, the Perrin family. You might recognize the Perrin family as the story that is depicted in the first Conjuring film. Now, Back in January of 1971, the Perrin family moved into an old farmhouse, a 14 room building in Rhode Island. Roger, Carolyn and their five daughters began to notice strange occurrences shortly after moving in, like missing objects, odd noises and small piles of dirt appearing in previously clean rooms. The girls began noticing spirits around the house, most of which were harmless, but some were a bit more aggressive. Things got worse. The spirits would cause their beds to rise off the floor and they would smell like rotting flesh. Carolyn researched the house and discovered discovered that it had a long history of people dying from mysterious circumstances, with some hanging themselves in the attic, and others drowning in the creek nearby. One spirit in particular, Bathsheba, was a spirit of a woman who lived on the property in the mid 1800s, who was a Satanist, and was somehow involved in the death of a neighbors child. The Warrens visited the farmhouse multiple times, and on one occasion, Lorraine conducted a seance, which led to Carolyn becoming possessed and speaking in tongues. The family, due to financial strain, was forced to live in the house until 1980, but reportedly the hauntings had ceased by then. Up next, number 2, the end Enfield Poltergeist The Enfield Poltergeist is the story that appears in the second Conjuring film. In 1977, the Hodgson family, who lived in Enfield, England, began to see and hear strange things in their home, including a dresser sliding across one of the children's bedrooms. Toys would fly around the house and were burning hot to the touch. Loud knocking sounds shook the house, to the point where they had to call the police, believing that someone was trying to break into their home. The officer who came to the scene reported seeing a chair rise up into the air and move across the floor all on its own. Reporters from the Daily Mirror were also present at one point, and they claimed that they had also witnessed some of these strange occurrences. The situation really started to attract some solid attention when one day, the iron fireplace in one of the bedrooms upstairs was ripped out of the wall. Warrens came to the house and upon investigating declared that there was a demonic presence there. While the film depicts an almost exorcism, the real life story is quite different. Two years after the hauntings began, they abruptly stopped. And finally, in at number 1, 
Amityville. Even if you're unfamiliar with the specifics of this story, you've probably at some point heard the name Amityville in correlation with horror or hauntings. Amityville is a real life place, approximately 30 miles outside of New York City. And back in 1974, a 23-year-old man named Ronald J. DeFeo Jr. murdered his entire family with a rifle while they slept. 13 months afterwards, a new family purchased the house, the Lutz family, who stayed there for 28 days before fleeing. The Lutz family claimed that their house was haunted by a violent spirit. After their first night there, the family began constantly getting into arguments. Their daughter started to spend all of her time playing with an imaginary friend named Jody. Awful odors emanated from all over the house, and black stains started to appear on various surfaces. Flies started to appear in one of the upstairs rooms that they had turned into a sewing room. George Lutz, the father, would always wake up at 3.15am, the time in which the DeFeo murders occurred according to the police. Family members started to appear aged and would levitate, so finally they got a priest to walk through the house. But the family still continued to be terrorized. 20 days after the family left the house, the Warrens were called in to investigate. While they were there, Ed was violently pushed to the floor and Lorraine was overwhelmed by a demonic presence, and saw the psychic impressions of the DeFeo family's bodies laid along the floor. Further research into the house revealed that it was actually the site used by a man named John Ketchum in the early 1900s, who practiced black magic. They also captured an image of a boy peering from the second floor of the house. The Lutzes eventually sold all of their belongings, some to the Warrens, and relocated to California. Alright, there we have it friends. Do you guys believe that these hauntings actually occurred? Give us a shout in those comments below and let us know your thoughts. If you dug this video, spread the love! Hit that like button. And be sure to subscribe to our channel for more terrifying stories and lists. In the meantime though, thanks for watching everybody. I'll catch you all in the next video.